Good morning, growers. Show starts in about 10 minutes. I know the music's on. But show starts in about 10 minutes. I'm going to smoke a bowl and get ready for my show. You're welcome to join me. Hey, you guys should be able to hear me now. Okay, this is a check before we start the show. I'm looking at the comments. So let me know if you guys, if I'm clear on this. This is this mic. Mic, mic. This is my wireless mic. Check, check. Wireless mic. Check, check. Are you still getting an echo? I'm in trouble because I don't know how to solve that.
Okay, so I'm on. I'm just testing this before the show because I'm in trouble. Um, this is my mic. It looks like it's good. I'm using the one in front of me. So you guys, let me know. It takes about 20 seconds to catch up. So I'm going to sit here and smoke cannabis. Ha <laughs> ha. Low audio on the lab. What house sounds like crap now? Your mic's laggy. Just crap on wireless. Wireless mic is the issue. Okay, so check, check. All right. So you guys, let me know because I got to make sure this thing is. I, I don't. I don't know how to solve the problem. I, I thought we were going good. Um, desk mic is good. Kill the wireless. Good desk mic. Okay. That's always a bummer about this wireless, right? All is good. Turn that volume down. Very choppy. Damn. Um, okay, give me a sec. Okay, we, uh, we should be good now. So what I did was I turned off all the other wireless connections. I turned off the internet connections on the other computer. And, uh, and yeah, you know, I even signed up for the uh, two megabit upload because I'm doing videos, right? We're streaming live. So, okay, so you're saying this is trimmed too high. Okay, so I turned the volume down on my mic a little. It just takes a sec to get tuned in. Sorry about that. Volume is fine. It's choppy. It says I've got a good data stream on my uh, YouTube live. Okay. No, no. Hey, Paul XYZ, don't buy me a console because that's not how OBS works. I would have no way to put a phone call in and to take my audio voice. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have to pay attention to it here, but I can't use the standard mix a lot. It's like two mics are on at the same time. Yeah, I believe that. Okay, way better now. Um, I believe it's like two, all's good. I believe it's like two mics on at a time. That seems totally reasonable. In fact, let's do this. I'm even going to. Okay. Wireless mic is off, but I don't think that's it. Eddie, Ro Eddie Rodriguez, autos aren't finicky. It's your growing. Um, okay, so I have two mics on. Everything else is muted. That's muted. Restart the computer. No, no. I had to replace every time I turn, every weekend when it comes to do the show, right? Like I turn on my computer. So, and, and every week one of these Logitech cameras is dead and I have to replace it. Fuck, you're saying restart? It's not a restart because if it was a restart, my cameras, I got all my cameras. I got all my restart the computer it's not a restart I bet you the new camera I have is probably hit the bong again reboot the computer no are you guys okay you guys are getting an echo it's not that bad okay so I think I think it is I think I got um I have two mics well we have every camera from Logitech has a mic on it it's not that bad now 
See, I hate that. Um, all right, the show's not supposed to start for another minute or two, so blam. <laughs> Echo was with the music. When you switch cameras, it got better. While you were switching, um, it's good enough. Does your new camera have a mic too? I don't know what a mic is, Crambo, but I did. Um, but I did. One to ten, it's an eight, so that's good enough. Okay, all right, so. So I, uh, <laughs> so this is my close-up cam, and from where I'm sitting, I look at, this is what I see. So I see what I'm doing, and that's the back wall, my lights up in the studio, that's the rest of my store. So I sort of sit back here, and I can see what I'm doing. See it up on the camera? Like, that's me and the camera, so I can see what I'm doing. And you can see I'm holding the mic looking forward, right? So I can see what I'm doing. And there's that new cam. See, right at the base of the TV, I have two cams. Um, okay, so that's that cam. And so I can see the two cams that I have. It's kind of staticky. It's the check, check. All right. Good audio now. Okay, so check, check. All right. Ha <laughs> ah, ha. Son of a bitch. See, none of the cams are supposed to have a mic on the wines. I'm not supposed to have. This is the only mic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's the only mic I am to be using. So, okay. See, now it doesn't sound good. Okay, okay. What about, what about this one here? So this one here is my old cam. So I think this one should sound pretty good. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just have to stay on this one for the show. So see the shirts? So let me know if the shirts cam is good. I have Turbo Clone Cam. That's... <laughs> okay, okay, so I'm going to stay with, okay, if the video is, I'm just going to say the video is too bright, it'll clip the video, good, it's okay, now. okay, so I'm going to stay with this cam, I think the new cam I bought to replace the old Logitech cam is no good, perfect, we'll just leave it like this, so, you guys have been watching for the, you guys have been watching for the last shows, right, this is like show, 13 I think and it's tough to find a voice for a show because I don't necessarily know what you guys want right so political comments suck um, talk, but and 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 trying to you know stock store stories went okay for like for like the uh, used equipment stories that went pretty well but for the most part Oh, dude, I, I, I'm going to ruin this shirt. I don't wear long sleeves because I'm hiding needle marks or tattoos. I wear long sleeves because skin is a weird color on these lights and too much in my bald ass head. So I don't, I don't have nook tattoos. I don't have, I don't have needle marks. I don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not looking around trying to find out where I'm going to smoke my next oxy. None of that. So. I don't wear long, I wear long sleeves because it's just polite. Like, there's just the light and it's polite and you know what I mean? Like, I'm not here to be a sex symbol, although I could be, but that's not what I'm here for. What am I here for? And that was what I wanted to talk to you about, the theme of the show today. What am I here for? And that is to help you grow cannabis. While I smoke cannabis and tell you about stories 
Now, and then I have to tell you about stories that go on in my hydro store and where used equipment comes from. That's my hydro store. That's my dog, Ralph, up front. <clears throat> so, that's what this show is. This is Cannabis Hotline. And what I did last week, it turned out really well. I got... <laughs> I'm going to go bottomless. This is how you do Cannabis Hotline with no pants on. Oh, and uh, I would suspect that the show nobody will forget is that overdose show I had two weekends ago. But anyway, what it seems to be that I'm going to do for the show is you guys want to know the things that I know about cannabis. You want to know how I can look at a picture and tell you it's not hot in my store. The air conditioner's on. That's another reason I wear long sleeves on the show because I wear shorts and a t-shirt in the store. But I, I what... Um, what am I smoking? I don't know. I'll tell you the story about the customer. It was this. So, anyway. So I wear shorts and a t-shirt in the store. But I keep the AC cool because I can't have a fan blowing on me on high. Because then it gets on the microphone and I can't have... Anyway. So what I've decided we're going to do on the show is I'm going to teach you. And I think I can do this in about 10 episodes. I think I can teach you how to solve problems like I do. Ah, oh, Super Weed Man in the house. Ah, oh, Super Weed Man, you always leave the funniest comments like my channel is all about you. It's, that's super funny. Oh, my porn name is uh, Rex Houston. Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> that was a weird question to even ask me. I shouldn't even know... I, Anyway, so I'm going to teach you in the next 10 episodes how to think about cannabis just like I do when I, look at a, when I look at a plant. Like literally, I can look at a plant. We know the age. We know the light. We can tell the system. There are so many things for us to tell about the plant. So as part of the progress, what we're going to do is I like the phone calls. I like that we went through a lot of phone calls. Oh, cannabis overdose was uh, last weekend, so... <laughs> I need to wear the shirts I sell. I don't have to wear the shirts I sell, but I do try to make it like a uniform, so I'm always wearing like the same shirts. But you can't wear white on camera. Look how bright it is. It washes out. In fact, I even like the black sleeves when I'm on camera better than the white ones. But yeah, I do. Uh, yeah, and um, uh, David, you need to uh, buy the shirts that I sell too. This is the Girl Boss Made for Marijuana shirt, and it's got all the vendors on the back. See that? I mean, you guys want to talk about, like, how I do things. I know you guys bitch at me and you say, oh, I, I get the comments that say, oh, he's always about selling shit. Oh, he's always about hydroponics. That was Elizabeth with Resort Rewards. One third of the phone calls we get, one third of the phone calls we get at the store are, uh, are, are, are telemarket or pre-recorded calls. Crazy the amount of wasted time. So here's what I do for my shirts. Like I send out magazines to every store every month as part of my campaign, right? Like I'll print for the vendors. I'll print 5,000 of my books. I'll send out 1,600 of them to the hydro stores and then I'll sell the other 3,500 to the growers. So not only do the vendors get in the hydro stores, they also get products for the growers in a way that none of the other advertisers can. Like most people just put magazines with articles in it. but. Uh, my book is uh, like a bunch of articles all put together about growing cannabis and all the mistakes that you guys go through. And that really seemed to, that really seemed to resonate last week when I was taking phone calls. So I thought what we'd do today is just do the same thing as last time. I'm going to forget about giving away prizes. Forget me trying to make, oh, what's this, what's that. These are my sponsors, man. You got Greenpad, Clonex. Humboldt Nutrients, Mondi, Thermoflow, Turbo Clone. These are my sponsors. These are the things that you guys see in the stores all the time. And these are the products I always encourage you to buy. They're the number one products in each of their categories. Because there's no reason for me to have a lot of advertisers. I just need the right one. And I win. Hi, you're on at the Grow Boss. Hey, I have a question. I have a 9x6 grower area that's open for me. And I really like the three-life professional, but it's uh, not really that big of an area. 
So I, I was wondering your output on that input. Okay, so what is what is the size of the area again? It's a nine by six. Yeah, it makes it tough. So you've got nine by six. It makes it tough to do a three light. So let's start from the other direction. How much yield do you want? I was looking for a pound, pound per light. Okay, you, we can't do a pound per light. What we can do is, in this case, let's talk about how much you want every, how do you want, is an, are you looking for an ounce a week? Now an ounce a week, is a pound every is a half a pound every two months is this just for you uh well be my spouse so it's about two ounces a week okay so you want two ounces a week so two ounce a week is let's see eight so that's so that's 16 ounce a month every two months so you want one pounds every 60 days okay one pound every 60 days just to start with is a four by four with a 600 watt and it's a two by four with a 400 watt um that'll fit uh nine feet wide yeah. six feet long yeah i mean yeah so if we do it so let's draw it out actually so nine by six so you'll put four by four and that's four here which still leaves you five this is six, which leaves you two here. So you could just run, oh, yeah. So you can just do it like that and you're good. Okay, okay. Yeah, and I was looking between the Kine K5 750 and the Dual Lux 600. Now, I'm not sure what's your input on that between the two. Is the Dual Lux an LED? Uh, yeah, I think it has four cob lights in there, and then it has the LED. Yeah. Okay. So what? So you have you have a Agro Lux, you said. What was the name of that? What no, that? Dual Lux. Dual Lux. Dual Lux. Okay. So you have a Dual Lux, and how many? How many? How much does it cost? It is uh, roughly about a thousand dollars. Okay, and you said you had a kind in there, and you said it was a. Uh, a kind. The kind 750. K5 750. Okay. How much is that? It's about 1300. 1300. Oh, damn! I had a customer come in the store yesterday, and he was like, "I can get it on eBay for 12," and I'm like, "No, you can't." I should have sold it to him. Like, I probably could have got 13. I didn't realize. I thought they were like 15. Okay. So you're at 2300 for the lights. So let's do this in two parts. I'm going to suggest that you get a, this is your light setup. I'm going to suggest that you get for lights a 16 bulb T5 or two times eight bulb T5s. That will be $400. And I'm going to suggest that you get, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna even step it up and I'm gonna suggest that you get a three by five tent for this and you're going to put an eight bulb in veg and that's going to cost you 200 this will still be a t5 so sorry i'm right in the way and you guys can't see okay okay all right so that's that's your light setup so you have let me redraw this. Now let me do a good job. So you want, you have nine by five, nine by six, and I'm suggesting four by four or five by five over here, and either a two by four or a three by five tent for veg for flower you have two leds for a total of you have two total leds for a total of 2300 i have three four foot eight bulb lights for a total of 200 each would be about 600 bucks so 
in my scenario, now either way you're going to have to buy tents, soil, whatever it is you're going to do. So basically your choice is, um, I will tell you that T5 heat equals LED heat. T5 okay. heat equals LED heat. So you are not going to save anything on an air conditioner for, for, uh, for this amount of electricity. If both those lights produce the same heat, then the question always is, how are you going to cool the heat? Because they both produce heat. So how are you going to cool that heat? That, that's always my question is, how are you going to cool the heat? Because you're going to have to deal with it. Now, you can tell me a house AC, and I will accept that for an answer. But Okay, I, I do not have an house, uh, house AC, but I was going to get the, the ones with the two vents that you showed on your okay. show the other day. So two LEDs. Let's just say that you've got the, let's just say that you're going to run, even if the electricity is the same, you're going to have 1,200 watts here. That's three times 400 watts. And let's just say you have 1,200 watts worth of electricity here. In both cases, an AC unit is going to equal 1,300 watts. So I just want you to understand that the average cost to produce one pound, one pound cost equals $225. And that's mostly, it's 175 AC, $50, everything else, because that's like soil and everything else. So if the cost of one pound yeah. is 225 and the bulk of this is 175, then if you double your electricity, suddenly you're gonna be spending 350 plus the 50, I mean, the rest of the stuff stays the same. And I understand it's still economically feasible. I just want you to understand that the, the ramification is no matter which light you buy, all light is heat. Agreed? Yes. Okay, so all light is heat. And the LED heat footprint is the same as the T5 heat footprint. Now, the HID footprint is much hotter. But the T5 and LED f uh, heat footprints, and I actually, I actually in, in let's see, here, um, in one of my venting videos here, I actually go over, so I have the, all these venting videos, and one of these venting videos is about venting your gardens, the difference between one and two duct air conditioners, you were mentioning that. Um, venting AC, oh, that was for vendors. So I have, a, I have a couple of these and they go over, I literally take a thermal graph and hold up the heat signature and I test them all in my store. And th literally the T5s was one degree hotter than the LED in the whole tent. Everything, the, the, the plants, the, the lights, all of it was one degree hotter. So your question is going to be, if the two tents together, let's just say run $300 for the tents, the fan filter is going to cost you $300, the nutrients will cost you $100, uh, the soil will cost you $20, I mean, all these things stay the same. The cost of production is going to stay the same in, in all of these cases. So, oh, <laughs> ultimate RO costs you like uh, $160, $179, you are going to need an RO, you're going to need an ultimate RO. So all of those things stay the same. You're going to have to make a decision then. Do you want to spend $2,300 or $600? So my question always comes down to this. Do you even know how to grow? Uh, I have grown four crops outside. Okay. I've never grown indoors. Okay, let me, I, I would really like to take a step back, walk that back. I'd like to apologize first because one, I'm an indoor store, like, like, all right, so I sort of assume that everybody grows indoors. Growing outdoors yeah. is an entirely different animal. No, no less work. I just, I show you those Bushmaster videos, and I just want to show you that growing cannabis indoors or out is no less work. Bigger plants, yeah. but no less work. However, it is an entirely different animal to grow indoors. Yeah, most definitely. So why are you thinking LEDs? What put you on the LED train? You know, um, I always hear about the heat from the HIDs and whatnot, and also about how you save electricity using the LEDs. So 
I figure I could save money both ways. Okay, so let me show you. If you have an LED, LED, let's say it uses 750 watts. Just the, just the use of electricity, just the use of electricity equals 750 watts worth of heat. Now, when you go outside and like right now it's 100 degrees in Vegas, why is the metal on my car 140 degrees? Why is my steering wheel 140 degrees? Because all light is heat. Not just the production of the light, but all light is heat. Even the light coming out of the light is heat. So if a 750 watt light truly performs like a thousand, okay, then it produces a thousand watts worth of light heat. So you get 1000 watts worth of light heat. Now, in an HID light, it gets 1000 watts worth of electrical heat because it actually uses 1000 watts. However, this number stays the same because it's 1000 watts worth of light and all light is photons. It's a duality, it's photons until it impacts something and then it becomes, there's a wavelength until it hits something, it becomes a photon and it impacts its heat. So the difference is the heat of the bulb. So I just want to be clear that the heat of the bulb is actually like 75% of the total heat. You never have to worry about like the heat of your magnetic ballast because the bulb will peel the skin from your fingers if you touch it. So the bulbs are always the hottest thing in your garden. So I will say that using an LED produces way less heat because you're not heating a gas that then emits the light. So Ushio bulbs like these right here. Ushio bulbs. These are the HID lights. And the, and the double N lights are even brighter and they're even hotter. Now, an LED and a T5, same heat signature. So now that you have the same heat signature, you got to ask yourself, why are you spending $1,700 more to buy LEDs instead of T5s? And I've gone over this several times in my show. And I know it's brutal, but I'm going to tell you, like I'm going to look at the camera so when you see this video later, there is no walking the statement back. LEDs are fantastic. They're brilliant pieces of technology. They have absolutely dick to do with cannabis. There is very few instances where LEDs are appropriate. And you guys know, I have think that LEDs are just about 100% failure rate for cannabis. If you get one cheap, however, I think they grow great cannabis. If you get a deal on an LED, they grow fan fucking tastic cannabis. However, you tell me, this is fantastic cannabis. Um, was it grown with an LED? Was it grown with a T5? Do you know what nutrients? Was it grown in soil? Hydro? Was it grown in? Can you be like, oh my God, that was a thousand watt double end light grown with botanic air nutrients and a hydro system with a flood tray that was watered four times a day with looks like 750 ppm. I'm juggling them on there. That's completely inappropriate. So. Yeah, you can't tell the difference. You can't tell the difference. So let's start with all but is the same. If you do this right, yeah. the butt is the same, agreed? So, if you yeah. were spending 17, if you were spending an extra $1,700 for the heat signature, then, then... Well, I guess, I guess it's not only the heat signature. On top of it, I guess I thought it would be quality, too. I hear about how the LED produces quality, so I put both those together. Okay, so you tell me, because a moment ago you just agreed with me that all but is yeah, essentially you, the same. you were right. Okay. And you are right. After watching your videos, I totally agree. Yeah, and I've been smoking for 37, since I've been 12, I've been smoking cannabis. So my observation is, before, and you guys come to my store all the time, and I sell a boatload of LEDs. Because, I mean, you come to my store, my job is to take your money. I give you one warning. I'm like, hey, LEDs are, and I go through a quick spiel, and then you'll usually look at the box and you'll go, yeah, I think I'll buy that kind. 
because I sell kind at my store because they are just spectacular from a store owner. They never break. They're, uh, they, they never come back. I don't ever have to return them. And when you do, if a customer comes in with a problem, I send them to kind, they just ship it back to you because that's the kind of company they are. So I'm always a fan of that light. All I'm suggesting is that not everything is appropriate for everywhere. But if you found a couple of LEDs like those for 500 bucks on, on Craigslist, brilliant. If you had a buddy that owed you money and you were going to take that on a discount, but I wouldn't, even for the price inside the store that I pay wholesale, I wouldn't buy LEDs. They're just so expensive. The profit margin is so small. Plus I've got this used pile of shit. Um, and that's just some of the reasons. Um, LEDs also, I mean, think about it. If a thousand watt light requires a five by five space. All right, listen, I got some, I got a couple things I want to get through. Let me thank you for the call, okay? Sure, thank okay. you. I, I'm going to keep talking about it, but I got a couple of things I got to do too. So, and that was one of the things that I really wanted to talk to you guys about on about doing this show because I'm going to show you in the next 10 episodes how to how the truth about and how I think about growing cannabis because you guys come into the store worried about eggshells in your media. I mean, I got an email from a guy who, who, who had a, who had his 315 CMH and he had like nine things, including dolomite and oyster shells that he mixed into his soil. And then you wonder why his plants were burnt. And I'm like, dude, I don't know if you overheated them from the nutrients, you cooked them from too much light. There, it's, there are so many things wrong with it. So I work at a hydro store every day, day after day. So I know everything that's going to go wrong, and all you have to do is avoid it. And I got a lot of people that come to my store, and they say things like, oh, I'm going to learn botany, and I want to learn how to grow plants. And yep, no, you don't. What you really want to do is you want to grow cannabis, and that's the new theme of this show. I'm going to show you how I think about growing cannabis. And we're going to look at pictures of cannabis. In fact, I even came up with, with a list and uh, I'm going to read it to you. I've got, uh, there's a bunch of rules when you come to my store because it's always the same thing. If you've heard me talk about LEDs, I always say the same thing. LEDs are great. They just have nothing to do with growing cannabis, but they are fantastic pieces of technology. Personally, I don't know what you would use them for. In terms of technology, they're brilliant. So, uh, in terms of marketing, listen, nutrients and LED manufacturers are, are, if you guys complain about me trying to sell like my shit, here's some grow boss shirts here with vendors on them. Here are these products. You guys complain about me selling shit, at least CO2 you saw in the great root race, CO2 will blow your fucking roots up, man. And so at least I'm here showing you how to use the stuff and giving you the reality of the situation. The reality of the situation is that, in my opinion, LEDs have a 100% failure rate with respect to growing cannabis. And just like you bitch at me when I say <laughs> nutrients have nothing to do with yield, you can gripe all you want, just like when I tell you pH lockout does not exist. And these are part of the truths that I go through all light is heat. All but is the same. And you hear me say them. So what I've started to do is I've started to collect the truths. I wrote them down all this week, and that's what we're going to do on the show. 718, you're on to the Grow Boss. What can I do for you? Hey, Grow Boss. I wanted to talk to you about growing underneath different types of lights. Okay. And I'm going to clarify. I use a two-by-four-foot space. It's a closet, and it's nine feet high. Um, I was using a 600-watt HPS bulb in an open wing, and I found that my plants didn't do as well. So what I did was oh, yeah, I had the equipment. Them. I went back to it. You killed them. I, I can tell oh, you yeah, that. You killed them with too much light. Exactly that. And what happened was it's a dimmable loom attack. It goes from 3.6 up to like 650 watts, but that's just hearsay. Um, what I did was I went back to a six inch cool tube with an inline fan. And what I started to do, I, I did this my last two runs, was I used my HPS when I first flipped, transitioned into flower, and I let them go under the 400 watt HPS for maybe three, four weeks, 
five tops. Then what I done was I switched out the cool tube and I put in a Mars Hydro 900 watt LED and I let my plants go the distance under that. I just let them finish. And what I noticed was my bud tasted and smelled a lot better and I kind of feel that it's because of the spectral. Because the, HP, the HPS is going to max out your plants. They're going to grow fast. But when you turn around and you go into like an LED, which is pretty much like little individual laser beams, your plants are going to metabolize. They're going to use a lot more of their nutrients faster. And I just was kind of wondering what you thought about doing that. You know, like kind of like a hybrid grow. Start on the HPS and finish on their LED. I have the equipment. I have, okay. you know... Okay, stuff so, I had accumulated over the years. So let me ask you this. Um, I would like you, sir, to explain to me how you, you, you cited me several facts. And one of the things that I always like to do is I like to confront facts. Because that's how we determine what the reality is. So this is the first time, the first time I have ever heard that HPS is a fast light and that LEDs metabolize. So I would like two pieces of information from you, sir. I would like how you know this information or and the, the proof that backs these two facts because you have, you have made a conclusion based on two facts that I have never heard before. So mm -hmm. how do you know HPS is faster? Well, I mean, when you're getting a plant up and growing and you don't want to have leaf burn, you don't want your leaves all bleached out, you know, I think the HPS has intensity, but it also has incredible heat at the canopy. Like, sometimes I can touch my leaves. They're actually warm, but then when the, H the um, LED is on and I'm touching my leaves, they seem like they're a lot cooler, like I have coolness in my space. So when you're looking at the HPS, all right, you're using one type of light. It has reds in it and it has blues, but it's a spectrum that it's the, that specific bulb is designed for. So when you're looking for growth, like starting from, say, like a clone or maybe the three-week-old seedling, four weeks, you want them to grow and stretch. You don't want to have any failure in that time period. That's why I'm saying that they're faster. You, you actually get to point B faster using the HPS than you would if you were using an LED. Now, I was the guy who called up last week when you had the little contest about that plant, okay. and we were talking. Now, that guy that was growing that big plant had that small little plant. Remember I, I commented about that? And I did notice how small that was, and that's why I think that growing under an LED to start, you, you're not going to go anywhere because your plants are just going to be screwed up. You're not going to have size. You're not going to have any kind of stretch. Your leaves are going to be small. You know, it's just a lot of problems. So I came up with the idea of because I had the 900, I said, you know what, I'm going to go half and half and see what happens. And I'm going to tell you, I think I had more trichomes. My bud was a lot stickier. It smelled better. It was tastier. And I also noticed that all of my leaves, even the sugar leaves, turned yellow right on the buds. How many times? Which I thought was kind of incredible. How many times have you grown so far? How many times have you start to finish got a harvest? Um, pretty much every time. Pretty much every time. How many times is that? How many harvests have you done? Three. Uh, about ten. About ten, about ten harvests. Okay. Oh God, I'm 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 doing this. I'm I'm fifty years old. First of all, and I used to live in the sticks, so I was doing outdoor work. Then I actually, when I moved, I'm in a building now. I actually do indoors, and I use the closet. I mean, I've been at this like twenty years. Okay. But probably in the okay. last maybe 10 years, I actually went indoors and I, I found out the hard way that growing outside, any dummy could throw a, 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 you know, like a ceiling outside and let Mother Nature, you know, take it all the way to the end. Growing inside is where the skill comes in because it's a completely different animal. There are so many different variables. When, whenever I overwater a plant or one of my plants gets sick, you want to know what I do with it? I put it outside and I give it to Mother Nature. And it's funny because every sick plant I've ever put outside came back in. And it's funny because Mother Nature just has a way. I mean, I, I had one plant, Blue Dream, was probably about four feet tall. 
I overwatered, over fertilized. I had this thing was all crinkle topped. It was barely growing. I put it outside, and about six weeks, she turned around. Excellent. All right. Completely turned right. around. Okay. Growing and just unbelievable. Okay. I, I just want to point out that that you're, you you several times had mentioned that that's how you feel it's affecting your crop. And, you know, you look at the amount of bush mm -hmm. work the Bushmaster does, and I'm not particularly sure if the Bushmaster would agree with you that you just throw a seed out and it, it's easy. So... What, what I would like to point out here is that I, I, I don't know the data that you're giving me that HPS grows faster and then you say things like you're really good but then you kill it with too much shit and you put it outside you're killing your plants with too much light and so I've got a couple things I've got to go over today but I don't agree with you thanks for the call thank you thank you but I don't agree with you when you tell me that it's not even that I don't agree with you I've just never heard that the the statements that more that LED grows that metabolizes and HPS grows faster. And even if even if that were all true, I mean, up until LEDs, people that grew great bud grew great bud. I just there isn't that much difference between bud from 15 years ago and 30 years ago. Good bud not not border weed there just wasn't that much difference in bud i remember having an eighth of stinky skunk indica in my pocket and my mom just be like you stink you need a shower so that's all i'm suggesting is that that bud got me pretty high this bud gets you pretty high you saw what happens when i smoke wax that was a disaster all right so to get back on track, what I really want to do is I really want to focus on, I'll take your calls, but I'm really going to try to focus on um, the facts and the figures of growing cannabis. So I've started by creating a list. Oh, shit. Okay, I think I know what to do. 858, you're on at the Grow Boss. Hello. 85, yeah, you're on at the Grow Boss. Okay, yeah, um, I'm calling to check uh, a question about LECs, light rimming uh, ceramics. Okay. What would you like? What's your question? Well, it's uh, an LEC versus uh, HPS, and what the difference is, okay. and like how they compare and they grow. Um, it, it, again, and they do these these lights do things in several ways, like plasma heats a gas and light emitting, what is this, light emitting a ceramic. Again, some of these things create a radio field and then that generates it. But all of these things, they really get hot. So, so I'm gonna answer, you. thanks for the call, I'm gonna answer it and I'm gonna sort of work into my next section, but I gotta get through a couple things today, thanks. So all I'm suggesting is that, that before you buy any light, you just watched me do it with this guy. I asked him how big his space was, and I asked him how much yield he wanted. I mean, that guy wanted yield. He wanted a pound a month. For me, I mean, a pound every 60 days. He wanted two ounces a week. A pound every 60 days is a 400 watt, 600 watt light rotation. So all you have to do is get a 400 watt, 600 watt light to get that yield. Blam! And that's a big deal. And that 400, 600 watt, one, two, three light rotation, you really have to watch my... You really have to watch, and that's what I'm going to try to get on through this episode is I make these videos where, where, they're, uh, where I explain to you the way to use light. And that's a big deal because if you have one light, two lights, or three lights, there are a lot of considerations that you have to consider. For instance, let's say you have one 1,000, a 400, 600, and a three 400s. Okay, that's all about 1,000 watts. 300, 400 is 1,200 watts. Let me slide on that for the example. But you have 1,000 watts and using three different ways. They're all going to get you the same yield. I don't care if you have one 1,000, a 4,600 combo, or three 400s. You're going to get the same yield. What we're talking about is, is the rotation of the three lights. I, I don't care what lights you use. You can buy three-kind LED 400s. You can buy three-kind... You can buy a 400, 600. You can buy a 1, 1,000. 
The difference between them is, for instance, in a one light rotation, if you start from seed every time, it takes four months. If you can start from clone, it takes three. <clears throat> if you can get 50 clones, you can veg for one week and flower for eight and get a harvest in nine weeks, but then you have to be able to get 50 clones. So there are all these variations. So I've sort of put together this list that I wanna go through with you guys because I can't give you all of the information at once. So I'm gonna give you a list that you can listen to when the show's over and you can chew through it again. And <laughs> I look thin when I, no, I, I don't look thin when I stretch the video like that. Thank you, I'm, uh, that's super funny though, uh, fractured. Anyway, okay. So I've started writing this list of truth that I want you guys to sort of think about because in every situation, I just pull from this list and I combine these thoughts in new and unique, not anymore. For, for the first few years, I combine these thoughts in new and unique ways until now. Now, as you've watched my shows come over the, like the last dozen shows or so, you can sort of get my thought process. I don't have to make elaborate videos anymore. Um, if you want to know about venting, you just watch my venting videos. I went over everything you need. It took six months to make those videos. Okay. So, rule number one. All light is heat. I don't care what light you buy. Whatever light you think is important. If for... If for some reason, without any substantiated proof, you think one spectrum is better than another, knock yourself out. You know what I'm saying? It's all about you. Hey, don't worry about what I got to say. But another truth is, all but is the same. And if you accept the fact that all but is the same, then you have to accept the fact that it doesn't matter what light you use, because when you go to a facility, none of the labels say, LED, CMH, CDE, single end. None of them say T5. They don't, there's none of that shit, right? They just tell you what the bud is. You smell it as long as it doesn't smoke. You feel the choke. You got, you're good, right? It's the bud. So rule is all light is heat. All bud is the same. <laughs> Perfect. That was next on the list, right? Okay. All light is heat. I can't, I just can't get past the fact that that's why your steering wheel is 140 fucking degrees when it's only 100 degrees outside. Because the steering wheel converts light into heat, like the windshield. That's why the inside of your car is so hot. Okay, number three. All nutrients are made from the same minerals. There are only so many ketchup manufacturers. I don't care which fast food restaurant you go to. 85% is going to be what? Heinz? I don't care what packet they put, put it in. One fast food chain can get to put in their own ketchup pack, but it's still Heinz. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you can color an egg any color you want, but chicken eggs are chicken eggs to some extent. You know what I mean? Like, to some extent, you have to admit that all nutrients are combined from the same minerals. And when I say that, I mean, you can argue, or you can argue about these wavelengths, the difference between LEDs and HIDs, and you can argue about... Uh, you can argue about different nutrients, but this is a periodic table of elements. There are only so many ways to combine the same mineral. And remember, if they're all the same elements and you switch nutrients, one of three things happens, right? One of three things. Your bud stays the same, your bud gets better, your bud gets worse. So two of those scenarios don't do anything for you. So you're risking a one in three chance. Of, of getting a better yield because you switch nutrients. Because remember, I showed you that last week on, uh, on, on, on my videos. I showed you last week that minerals, that the nutrients are just a combination of minerals, that the individual elements are minerals when we went through that photosynthesis chart. So, um, let's see. All nutrients are made from the same minerals. Nutrients are related to plant health only. They have nothing to do with yield. You can only push a plant so far with nutrients. Once you push a plant to that point with nutrients, the rest is glucose, converting light into sugar. All right, so all of these rules that I'm giving you are the facts that swim through my dome when I look at pictures. So in this particular case, if you can get hold of all of the problems, all of the facts that swim through my head, and you can memorize these 25, 30 facts 
And then you can pull from them like I do. You'll be able to do just what I do when people ask me questions. Because it's always the same thing. So all you have to do is know the details of what I know and then buy from my sponsors. <laughs> See how I worked that in? Okay. Um, nutrients are related to plant health only. They have nothing to do with yield to a point. Once you get that base yield from the nutrients, what's switching nutrients going to do? And nutrients are only a small part of the entire process of budding, of producing buds, right? Nutrients are like 5% of the whole process. So even if you doubled your nutrients and it was 10%, you double your light, you double your yield. But my point is, is that if 10% doubles it, wouldn't 25% more be even better? And why couldn't I just grow the, the plants right in the nutrient bottle? Why? You just grow more... Where does it where does it stop? And that's one of the details I always ask you guys. If you think it's better, where does it stop? How much better? Can you triple it? Now you can triple the light. Think about that. You wouldn't triple the light over the same canopy, but if you tripled the light and you tripled your canopy, you wouldn't triple the nutrients. Okay. The next one is yield is based on light and quality on grower talent. 400 watt lights a half pound. 600 watt lights a pound, 1000 watt lights a pound and a half. If you put a 1000 watt light in a 400 watt space, by definition, you have three times the light. And where are you going to put three times the yield? See what I'm saying? So, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm just going to leave that. I'm just going to leave that comment alone. Um, so, yield is based on light and quality on grower talent. Brilliant. So, let's take another one. Plants want less when they're small and more when they're bigger, right? I mean, just by definition, plants want less when they're small. I mean, think about it. They tell you people want 2,000 calories a day. Can't feed a baby 2,000 calories a day. You know what? You've seen what happens when people feed babies 2,000 calories a day. Yet it doesn't say fully grown adult healthy males can consume 2,000 calories a day for an average for a, for a net zero weight, right? So here in this picture, what I show you is small plants want less and big plants want more. And if this is a 12 week process, you're going to be at max at week 10, two weeks to finish. But if you're at max, if you're at this PPM, it doesn't even matter what PPM that is. I just wanna be clear. Everything that I give you is just a scale that you have to place your situation on. Then you combine the different scales to come up with an average RPM, an average PPM. You know, if it's like driving a car, you got to figure out your gear. You can't be in the fast lane in second gear. That's not how this works. So if this plant right here represents in the fast lane in sixth gear at 1100, if you were to shift that down here, that doesn't work. You can't be in, in, in coming off a red light in sixth gear at 1100. It doesn't work like that. So you have to get the right size and the right everything at the right time. And it's a slope, right? There's a slope of a line to this. And you have to know what it's going to look like in 12 weeks. So you know what it's going to finish like today. So you know where you should be at today. Because listen, if you've got a thousand watt light and a thousand watt light, is meant for week four flower. Like you shouldn't have it up to a thousand until you have a five by five space, 18 inches deep, halfway through flower of tops. Then how can you possibly justify having that on in week one, unless it's 15 feet away? Okay. Plants want less when they're small and more when they're bigger. If all the magic happens at the end, then by definition, the sooner you finish, the less magic you get. That's just a rule. If all the magic happens at the end and you finish sooner or you harvest or plants grow fat or you grow them faster, then if an eight week flower becomes seven weeks, then a two week finish goes from 14 days to nine. And if you have nine days at the end, what the fuck, and you want, and you're telling me you want the best quality, then why are you in hydro or aero? If you want the best quality, then by the very definition, you can't be in hydro. Now, I'm not saying that hydro doesn't grow great bud. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm suggesting is, is that there's a theory that says if you want the best, there are certain things that have to happen. If all the magic happens at the end, then you have to have as long as an end as possible. 
So my question is, in hydro, if you have a short veg and a fast flower, and you do more plants because you don't veg for eight weeks in flower, I mean, you don't veg for eight weeks in hydro, plants will get too big. So you'd never do a two light rotation with hydro because you got an eight week veg. You can only do one in three light rotations with hydro. You veg four weeks, then flower with the one light. Anyway, so all I'm saying is that that's a big deal factor. If you come in and you want the best, I don't care which soil you buy, there are lots of soils, and they're all going to grow you about a media grow. Soil, cocoa, same shit. Don't matter what nutrients. They can put whatever labels they want on it. It's the same shit. You're going to be in it for 12 weeks, and you could grow in hydro, and you can't tell the difference between soil and hydro and LED and T5 and HID anyway. So none of it matters. I'm just, remember, this is just the perspective I'm trying to give you on the rules that I'm writing down because these are how... I'm over. These are how I guide my answers. Okay. Um, you don't need to know how to grow. All you have to do is not kill your shit for 12 weeks and then harvest. I get a lot of people that come through my store. It used to be me too when I was younger. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I'm going to be botany. I'm going to learn everything there is about plants. I'm going to learn how to grow. I'm going to be so... Absolutely not. Now that I work at a hydro store every day, day after day, I'm telling you, that has absolutely the opposite. If there was as far away as you could be from the reality of the situation, the last thing you need to know how to do is grow. The plant does that all by itself. So these are the thoughts that I have that, that narrow me down into the the answers to the questions to the problems that i get side by side hydro grows the biggest bud oh yeah 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 it, it, it grows the biggest bud but that doesn't change the yield that's my point you may grow bigger more dense buds your buds may be dense in a way that this bud that i was showing you earlier is dense that is really dense but there's also some strain factor to that isn't there and in hydro you have more plants and it's a little more intensive because you have to pay attention because things happen faster right that's why i tell you there's a huge difference in these systems i still haven't i've been so busy i still haven't tagged up these tagged up my book okay When I show you the math of what comes through my store, look at this chart. This is days in veg. This is media hydro arrow, the different ways to grow. This is the quantity of plants. As, as the plants get older, they get bigger, you need fewer. So in media, if you're gonna grow 30 inch plants, it takes almost a month. It takes half the time in arrow. I mean, that makes it tough to do arrow and hydro in an eight week, two light rotation. Also though, if you have a problem in soil, it takes 10 days. If you have a problem in hydro, it takes six. Why? Because things happen faster. And it 70 days versus 60, and that's time to harvest. And again, my point is always this. If yield is based on light and quality on grower talent, then you're going to get more dense bud, but you get the same weight. The trick is, is that you get more harvests in a year. So if you do hydro, you get seven harvests in a year where you would get six in media but you get the same weight you just get an extra cycle in there and that's i mean i, I say it's the same weight but you go from six to seven i mean that's an increase of like almost 18 percent so those are real tricks but it, it depends on what light rotation you have because not everything you can't do an eight week veg in a two light rotation with a 400 watt veg and you can't veg for eight weeks in hydro the plants physically get too big so in hydro you tend to do things faster versus media where you tend to do things slower and if you do things faster the reality is that people that do hydro harvest based on weight not quality why because if you wanted quality you would have grown in media so that's why I can say that there are certain positions and certain conditions and there are certain scenarios where certain things are right and certain things are wrong. Okay, if you, 
you don't need to know how to grow. All you need to do is not kill them for 12 weeks and harvest. Okay, next. You can't speed up this process. It is what it is, and there is nothing you can do about it. All you can do. Ha chew! That butt is that butt is six months old. I pulled it out of a bag, and it is making my eyes water and making me sneeze. That butt is spectacular. I will tell you a story about that butt and that insane customer tomorrow when I have time. All you can do is use these products. CO2 speeds up the process, but it's part of the light water. CO2 equals glucose and oxygen. So that's something different. And there's still a, only so far you can go. But all you can do is use Humboldt Nutrients properly. 210, I can't take your call because I've got to get through this because my store's got to open soon. All right, you can't speed up the process. All you can do is eke what you can eke out of the system. With 400 watt lights, you're gonna get 400 watt results. With 1,000 watt lights, you're gonna get 1,000 watt results. But you're never gonna get 1,000 watt results with 400 watts worth of light. That's just not how the game works. It requires a certain amount of space to get a certain amount of yield. You can't fit two pounds where only one pound will fit. You can't put a 1,000 watt light in a two by four space. That last caller was that very thing. He had a 600 watt light in a two by four. And even though it was nine feet tall, you can only grow two by four worth of bud because you can't grow three feet indoors. You can really only grow two foot buds in that scrog kind of canopy shape. Outdoors, you can grow big, long bud arms, but indoors, you can't really do that. If you can do two foot arms, I mean, you are, you know, I mean, you're the man. That makes you amongst the best of the best because you can't get the quality without the yield and you can't get the yield without the quality and if you're getting the yield you're supposed to and I say a pound and a half on average so you're gonna get more than that that's where the quality is hidden the quality is hidden is when you're getting more than the average that I'm telling you that's all I'm suggesting okay it requires a certain a thousand watts worth of electricity will on average yield 1.5 pounds every 90 days or a half pound a month I don't care if you get one 1,000 watt light and you veg for four weeks and flower for eight, that's pound and a half. I don't care if you have a 400 watt, 600 watt light and you're vegging simultaneously while you're flowering and you get a pound every 60 days. A pound every 60 days is a half pound a month. A pound and a half every 90 days is a half pound a month. Three 400 watt lights is two in flower, one in veg and a 400 watts a half pound. So three 400 watt lights is a half pound a month. A four 600 combo is a pound every two months. One 1,000 is a pound and a half every three months. Same fucking yield because yield, say it with me, is based on light and quality on grower talent. Okay. Um, it requires a certain, um, um, pH is irrelevant and pH lockout does not exist. You do, however, need to know PPMs. Think of PPMs like calories. You gotta need, you need 2,000 calories per day right? Absolutely not. People don't need that. Grown adults need that. But like I said, that's just playing that trend line. Venting does not cool the garden unless the air coming in is cold. Venting only removes heat. Why? Because only air conditioners cool the air. And if you cool the air, you'd be insane to vent your garden. All I'm saying, that's a bunch of videos that I made. Um, venting your house AC. Oh, yeah. Venting your house AC or using a one duct AC is an automatic fail. If you, if you pay to cool the air and you throw it outside, you failed. CO2 pays for the AC. Well, of course, as soon as you seal the room and you stop venting, you gotta add CO2. CO2 is 25% more, light water CO2. The longer the veg, the bigger the plants, the fewer you need. Plant count is based on veg time. The longer you veg, the fewer you need. If you veg for six weeks under a 400 watt light, you will not have two 200 watt plants. You can only fit one. However, if you veg for four weeks, you might get two 200 watt plants. But if you only veg for three weeks, I mean three weeks, you only veg for three weeks, you might get four 100 watt plants. So the longer you veg, the fewer the plants, the bigger they are. You get 400 watts worth of light, you're only gonna get 400 watts worth of plant. Don't care if you veg them 400 watts big or you veg them 200 watts and flower them 400 watts. 400 watts is 400 watts. Um, plant count is based on veg times. Plant count is irrelevant. I don't care how many plants you need to fill the canopy. It's all about the canopy. Media grows are harvested based on quality. 
Hydro is harvested by weight. See, I'm already starting to duplicate myself. Your veg light must be half your flower light. When growing in hydro, you must duplicate whatever you're doing in hydro in veg. There is no perfect anything. No perfect humidity, temperature, nutrient, light, environment, or anything else your big brain came up with. There's no perfect anything. I mean, I've got guys that have been doing this a long time and suddenly like a plant in the corner, they got to add a fan because the plant's not getting the circulation suddenly. That's why I always ask if you know how to grow because if you've been doing this for a while, you see the problem and you add a fan. Uh, it was actually a box fan underneath the legs of the plant. Um, plants got big that time. They missed, their, they missed their flip time by a few days. Okay. Plant count is irrelevant. It's about the canopy. Media grows are harvested based on quality. Hydro is harvested by weight. Your veg light must be at least half your flower light. When growing in, there is no per, the correct amount of nutrients is the least amount uh, possible for your plants to be healthy. The correct amount of nutrients is the lowest possible amount you can get away with. Not the most. High humidity kills bugs, but promotes molds and mildew. Low hum humidity kills mold and, and mildew, but promotes bugs. That's why you need both. Each is the other's opposite. There's no perfect humidity. It's high and hot on some days and low and dry on others because it's the, each is the other's nemesis. That's why whenever it comes to this time of year at the hydro store, I buy a couple cases of mite spray. And six months ago, I buy a couple of cases of mold and mildew when it's wet outside because suddenly it's wet outside and you're not venting, your AC doesn't have to be on as much because the outside temps are cooler, the motor works more efficiently, and suddenly your humidity goes up. You gotta turn the AC down, keep the fan on longer, and you gotta add one underneath the legs of the plant. Um, high humidity, of a kind, of a size, under a light. Of a kind, of a size, under a light. A big thing is, if you have plants of different heights and different sizes, you're not allowed to raise a little plant up to the height of a tall one by putting boxes and phone books underneath it. Not allowed to do that. Because if a plant is tall enough to be that close to light, the fuck are you doing putting a little plant up there? It should be all the way down there. Which means all that light in that section right there where the plant is, you've lost. I mean, it may be okay, you may be willing to sacrifice the light, but you can't put a little plant where the big light is. So if you're shooting for yields and you want, those, you want that rotation weight, then you're going to have to do of a kind, of a size, under light, because that's the most effective way to do this. It also demonstrates your skill. Part of this is being able to create that canopy. Why? Because it's all about the canopy. Plant count is irrelevant. It's about the canopy. I don't care how many plants you have. If you don't fill up a five by five space, one foot deep, before you start flowering, where are you gonna put the buds? If you put a trellis up and you go into flower and flower needs to be two feet deep when you finish and you only finish one foot deep worth of bud. If you only finish one, where are you gonna put the other half? You gotta get two foot buds in almost every friggin' square if you want that yield. It's like a four-year college program. If somebody drops out at the end of semester one, they've got a hole for the rest of the program. So the, these are the concerns. It's more important that you get a top in every hole at the start of flower, one foot tall, three nodes at the top, one, two, three nodes on the branch. Otherwise, when the next foot worth of bud grows, where's the first foot worth of bud gonna grow? So if you start flower, oh, here's another one. If you go into flower and, and, and halfway through flower, you take out half the plants because they're a different strain. If you have half the plants, suddenly you have twice the light. That's an important one because I ran into that tech support call yesterday. If you take out half the plants, of course the other half are going to burn because it's all about the canopy. If you remove half the canopy, technically the remaining plants are going to get something like twice the light. See what I'm saying? And all of these things 
literally one of them had all of these truths. One of them had to do with anything with nutrients. One out of about 30 or 3%. And remember how I told you earlier in the video that nutrients, even if they were worth 5%, again, of all of these truths that you guys come through my hydro store, all of these truths have everything to do with using the equipment and nothing to do with which mineral, with which recipe, which mineral recipe you choose. I don't even know what to call nutrients anymore. Which mineral concoction? What, you know what I mean? Like which um, uh, brew of minerals do you use? They're all the same minerals. I mean, they're, they're all the same wavelengths in different proportions for the lights. <clears throat> Light water CO2 are the only three things in the photosynthesis equation. I showed you in the great root race how Clonex solution, from nothing to Clonex solution, from there, there was very little difference by which products you used, unless it was a roots, like a root maximizer, or CO2, which can't double the nutrients and get twice the yield. That's just not how this works, or you wouldn't do it, or you would do it four times. So what I'm suggesting is, is that when you're very good at this, um, it's finesse. It's not trying to create the perfect environment. It's just not killing your shit for 12 weeks and then harvesting. That's funny. All right, so it's 10.06. At some point in the near future, I'm going to have to end my show. So I think what we should all do is uh, smoke cannabis for a few minutes and just end the show on... Uh, I'd just like to point out that I wasn't, it's been a super busy week. I came in prepared with this list that I wanted you to hear and I wanted to get through all in one sitting because I'm going to now continually show you how I use rules one through whatever over the course of the next week or so, I'll refine the rules. I mean, I also have a bunch of individual speeches like rotations and yield versus light about light is heat. And all of these little speeches that I give all pertain to these rules. And I'm hoping over the next, if you notice, I changed the show to Cannabis 101 because, oh, no, no, honorable, I, I don't say large scale grows. I said about T5s. What I said was, is yield is based on light. And there are lots of different ways because if you were to do a large scale grows with T5s, it'd be as dumb as buying LEDs for a large scale grow. Why? Because DE lights are right for large scale grows, but they're hotter. But it takes $5 more to buy a bigger air conditioner. So it's, they, they just turn on, a, they just buy a bigger water cooled air conditioner. So of course, large scale grows. Just like I tell you, every light is fantastic. I don't give a fuck which light you, which light you grow with. Not every light's right for the same spot, right? This guy had a two by four by nine foot tall closet with a 600 watt light. Don't care what light you grew with. It was appropriate for a 400 watt light. I don't care what light you grow with. If you think the spectrum matters, brilliant. Good for you. Just tell me again. What's the difference? How can you tell what light the spectrum, how can you tell anything about the bud that the spectrum was grown with? I mean, I'm just suggesting that I, I, I work behind the counter of a hydro store. I see it all. You listen to the phone calls. I have these set of rules. Dude, I'm a paramedic nurse. I work on an ambulance. I wrote this book called, now it's called Vital Signs because I've tried to make it more corporate. I'm going to start making videos for it just like I do. <laughs> just like I do videos for this industry, like, you know, for growing cannabis and my bend for my advertisers, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, uh, make a series of videos with a green screen and an ambulance. I'm going to read stories from my book and I'm going to start, that may be the most brutal. That's the most brutal book I have ever read. My book about being a paramedic. Oh, absolutely fucking brutal both from the perspective of, of of how it affected me and how it affects people's lives and what happens and so oh just the absolute nonsense spectacular <sighs> oh yeah see t5 dan that's a perfect example of a guy who has limited height he doesn't want a one foot hood look at those hoods those hoods are like one foot tall you look at a t5 oh and those things are two inches. And then the best thing is when I get calls from like Wisconsin, Milwaukee with unfinished basements with rafters and they're running on like a five foot ceiling. Oh, you do a four week veg 
with six or eight plants depending on the strain with a five foot seal with a five foot rafter or a six foot rafter oh you can't do an hid there that's why i always tell you guys you gotta have the right equipment for the space that you have based on the yield and the heat tolerance that's why i don't care what light you buy there are so many reasons not to buy a t5 like you're growing big if you want yield you would never buy a t5 and if you want heat knock yourself out buy those hids i have on the floor here i mean you can come in and buy a bull ballast hood i had some guy come in buy five of them for 500 bucks with used hoods bull ballast hoods hoard deluxe used bulbs 500 bucks 100 bucks a setup so i'm just suggesting that just like anything you wouldn't tow a motorhome with a ford banger even if you put a turbo in it you just wouldn't tow something with a four-cylinder right and if you're driving a four-cylinder you keep the rpms up because you don't drive like an eight-cylinder that has the torque you just don't want the rpms like that all i'm suggesting is is that if you get the right equipment for the right space and you don't kill your ship by doing too much too fast by making too many moves because you're so smart right because you are ready to be smarter than mother nature but it's never like that so oh here's one more piece well here's one more truth <laughs> i think there's a bug in there it's still in there mother nature is smarter than you you can only push the plant so far you can only work within the plant's performance if you give the plant too much light too much water too many nutrients you will never give it optimal performance if you this plant takes 12 weeks 12 weeks to this plant is 45 minutes to you if you change your mind even twice in the whole process it's over that's why i always ask you guys i had somebody call two of the vendors nutrients and and i don't remember what the other one was but he was screaming at them about how his runoff was this and that oh the other was the store okay never quote me to the hydro stores don't be like hey the grow boss says ph lockout doesn't exist oh my god the shit they hate me because of that i am trying to steer you to buy the right equipment from your local hydro store always shop local always support my advertisers always buy the grow book and equipment guide because all of those little truths that i gave you today and all of those explanations that i give you over the next nine episodes i'm going to use those truths to fully justify and back all of my positions will probably add some too by the time it's over we'll probably have 35 I'll probably have to watch the end of this video and add the last couple things I said to that list. Why? Because there are only so many ways to succeed growing cannabis. Now, I know a lot of you post comments that, oh, you don't know everything, you don't know. Dude, I hate growing cannabis. It is slow, it's painful. Oh my God, we're starting Project Grow House and I already know, first eight days of flower, last eight days of flower. My face swells up because something happens to the cannabis. Like, you're right, you get those, um, uh, they produce uh, the phytochromo, spinny pheromone things that help fruit all ripen when they're next to each other. The phytochromes that they send off. So I I'm just suggesting that I'm going to teach you over the next nine weeks my thought process. And I'm going to teach you how to combine all of those things that are in my No More Grow More Fat cards, right? Because I already know every problem you have. And I tried to sort of start doing this last week. But I, I sort of, you know, it's the first time I did it with that game. So we're going to do a call in. I'm going to show you pictures. But I sort of wanted to define what it is that I intend to do by imparting my information and then showing you how exactly showing you, just like I did in my paramedic book. I walk you through me being a paramedic and everything that I think about, the lessons that I learn, how I carry them forward. And that's what these cards are about. These are all the questions. Name three positions for a charcoal filter. Blam. And then I show you. These are the three ways you can use a charcoal filter. Why? Because you guys always have name three plant shapes and their sizes. And there's the answer. Name four purposes roots serve. Boom, there's the answer. What's this for? And so I already know every problem you're going to have. 
So I just want to be clear. If you want to grow cannabis and you, and you define success as ending up with the best quality, highest yield possible, then you are not allowed to experiment. You have to literally take all the knowledge from all of the websites, from everybody, and you have to combine what you think appropriate, most and least, and drop what you think least appropriate, and you have to put it all together in such a way that it's meaningful to you. Now, that's brilliant. Anybody can do it, except I'm the guy who works behind the hydro store, which gives me a unique perspective that no other book has. And that is, I wrote down every question that you guys came into my store with and, uh, <clears throat> and then answered them in detail in my book. And then if I already know these are all the grow rooms that you're going to have. It explains one, two, and three light rotations. This is the 20-week garden tracker. Why? Because I know everything you need to track in your garden. So you would take, you'd take this book. Oh, yeah, you have to put up with my advertisers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's why I can sell everything at the prices I do, right? So, I mean, my book's 20 bucks. It's paid for by the advertisers. So here's TNB, check that out. Here's some tips about elephant foot and what to watch for during this week. And here are all the things that you need to make notes on. There's the cover, 20 week garden tracker. Why? Because there ain't nothing new. All you gotta do is avoid, say it with me, <laughs> avoid failure for 12 weeks and then harvest. Okay, this is Cannabis Hotline. If you have questions, it's 84 Grow Boss. I'm gonna end the show now. I've given you the rules. I'll have to add a few more. I'll be better prepared for tomorrow um, in a, you know, to continue giving you the rules. Breaking down the stories, taking phone calls, and teaching you how to grow cannabis. Otherwise, I'm gonna sort of clean this up for today. 84 Grow Boss, thanks so much for watching. Humboldt Nutrients, Mondi Sprayers, Domes and Trays, Thermoflow, The Ultimate RO. I'm the Grow Boss. You can buy my book on thegrowboss.com, eBay, Amazon, or from your local hydro store. But definitely don't go to your local hydro store and be like, hey, the Grow Boss said. If you want to know what I got to say, watch my videos, buy my book. I've got shirts with advertisers on it. It says made for marijuana. Gotta love that shit. Green pad. So, that's everything you need. I totally appreciate you watching the show. Thanks so much.